So tonight on Garage Time, we are going to discuss our hoist. Now, if you've been watching the show, you notice we have a four post hoist, which I'm touching right now. And on my left hand side here, you can notice we do have a two post hoist. So major things to consider and questions people have. So if you are in the market for a hoist, I'd consider what you want to use it for, your space and whatnot. So we're going to go through some of that now, the advantages and disadvantages of both. And to start, we'll look at the four post. So the four post hoist we went with was the HD 9X W from Benpack. You can see this is a newer, uh, their newer hoist are the gun metal gray, uh, which actually I do. I think it was a great choice by them. I like it better. So anyhow, gun metal gray, the 9XW, so what that stands for is it can hold 9,000 pounds. Uh, our waltz items are obviously quite less than that. And the XW stands for its standard width but we went for the extra tall model. And the extra tall model really, in my opinion, isn't that extra tall. Um, I have about six foot seven clearance here. Now, clearance was definitely a concern of mine because of the Westy and the roof rack on the 64. I needed the vehicle to fit underneath, so we just make it. I have about an inch clearance from the ramps. Now the ramps typically, even though you buy the extra tall lift, the ramps typically fall down quite low. So to stop the ramp from falling down as much, you can buy these optional brackets, I'll call them, but from Benpack that install here. But again, it still was falling too low that my vehicles couldn't fit underneath. So we went ahead and welded this extra plate on top. So it, it's free floating. We welded it onto their bracket, but it just gave us that little bit more of a lift, but now we have clearance for our vehicles to fit underneath. So some advantages of the four post over the two post though is uh, you don't require as much uh, strength in concrete or thick of concrete uh, to support it. Check obviously with the installation manual. I believe they only say three inches for this one. Um, they actually even offer a rolling base you can buy. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if I would want to be rolling it around, but um, you can buy a base that is movable. Um, one thing I found a little disappointing with it, and maybe I should have read the instructions or manual more closely before purchasing, but the safety on this isn't a cable safety like on the other one. It is air. So we ran a permanent air hose up and over to it to unlock the safety, uh, obviously by air pressure. So since our primary use for this hoist is uh, storage, we went ahead and purchased these trays. So these are just thin plastic trays, but to catch the oil, um, I'd highly recommend that, especially if you're parking a Volkswagen above. Uh, they always tend to have a little bit of a drip somewhere. So anyhow, this protects the vehicle underneath. They just move around and if you did, if you did want to get access to the vehicle above, you could easily uh, move them out of the way. Now, if you don't have a second two post hoist to work on your vehicle, this track here you can actually get little jacks as an option. Uh, I think it's a fairly pricey option, but you can get little jacks here that you can lift the vehicle up. So say you did want to do a brake job or whatnot on your vehicle, and this was your only option. You can do it. It's not going to give you the accessibility that the two post does. So moving over to our two post, this is the X. PR 10 ALP. Now what all that means is it's a 10,000 pound hoist. Uh, it's got the asymmetrical arms. So you have the short little arm and the long arm. That's why you'll notice all of our Volkswagens are always 
backed in, so you gotta obviously center the weight and you know the little arm you have less weight hanging over that side than this side. Um, so you know you'll see all that in the manual how to properly lift a car. Um, this hoist also has the low profile arm. Some of our vehicles are quite low, so it is a, a lower profile to this arm than your typical arm. So again, just all stuff to consider when purchasing your hoist, what you'll be lifting. Um, we also have this in the wide setting because, you know, one day we'll lift a Yukon and the next day we'll lift a Volkswagen Beetle, so it needed to fit both. Uh, you can't just put it on the narrow setting and then next thing you know you can't lift your Yukon. Uh, an option we added to this hoist as well is the extension on the top. So it's got a two foot extension over your typical lift and that was convenient if you have like large items on the roof for example um, that you still can raise the car to maximum height before hitting the safety bar at the top to stop it. Another thing to consider and the choice we made is our bar, so our cables and power run across the top. There's also some floor options so that the cables and hydraulics and whatnot actually run across the floor. You have a plate on your floor so again it's decisions you have to make. Do you want the plate or do you want a bar at the top? So I didn't want to play it on the floor, I went for the bar at the top. So comparing the two, I do prefer the two post over the four post. Uh, we do a lot of work and it makes it much easier to work on the vehicle. Less obstructions, all you have are these arms. It's just, it's, it's a lot easier. Um, lifting time is faster, lowering time is faster. You know, the safety on this one is cables, so I don't have to have an air compressor running to make sure that I can turn on or open and close the safety. So yeah, as far as working on a vehicle, this one's preferred. As far as just storing a vehicle, the four post is definitely a great option. Now, last thing is obviously the major consideration in your garage would be height. Uh, when we built this garage, height was obviously planned for. We knew a hoist would be going in. We even put thicker concrete in the area where we knew these posts were going in this garage. There was always the plan for the two post. The four post was kind of an afterthought as more vehicles seemed to come into the garage. So in summary, there, there's a lot of things for you to consider. What you're going to do, what kind of vehicles you're bringing in, what you're doing to those vehicles, your garage. Uh, there's a lot of manufacturers out there too. Now we're not sponsored or have no affiliation with Benpack, but I did my research and I like Benpack a lot. Like the floor plate was bigger, the metal just seemed bigger, thicker, and when I'm standing under a vehicle, bigger and thicker meant a lot to me. So I wanted uh, to make sure it seemed uh, nice and solid. It seemed to have very good reviews. And in all honesty, pricing was, was reasonable. Uh, some of the other brands out there were more money, um, but they didn't look uh, as well made in my eyes. So uh, Impact was the choice for us. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you out there.